Hi friends, my name is Suvasis. In today's session, we'll cover how we detect historically run queries and long running queries in Microsoft SQL Server. Queries uh, which might be taking longer to finish or may be taking too much of CPU time, too much of uh, disk IO, right? it is reading or writing a lot of data uh, to or from uh, the disk. This could be a hard disk uh, or you know, solid state disk, SSD disk. I'll share my screen. And we'll go to the repository path, query dash optimization. Under that, you'll find a folder by the name SQL Server. So let's follow the steps. Step zero. Now, if you are using Windows operating system, then it would be convenient to use Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. But in my case, or you know, many of you, I'm for sure you'll be using Mac, and then the best alternative will be to use Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Azure Data Studio. So if you just go to this link, I have opened it here. Uh, in this download section, you'll find relevant in you know, operating system relevant uh, binary to install Azure Data Studio. For today's demo, I'm using the one that is available for Mac OS. Okay. I've already installed and it is available for me to use here. All right. And in this, uh, the next step would be to go to this Microsoft link, especially the second one, right? Uh, where you will find a command to download SQL Server image. Okay. Now, just to save the time, I have already downloaded it to my system. It takes a couple of minutes based on your network speed. I just ran this command. Okay. You can skip the sudo part, not required. Now, one thing that you notice here is uh, uh, the image, the tag has got 2019 latest. Let's confirm that. All right, so this is the image name and this is the tag. That's exactly what we have downloaded from here. Move on to the next step where we will be running the Docker image by providing few parameters like uh, accepting the end user license ag agreement, providing a strong password for SA user, exposing the port to uh, from within container to my local host, and that is 1433. Name of the container would be MS SQL. And then Docker image would be the one that we just downloaded. So let's go to a terminal and run that. There you go. Now, if you come here and look at the containers, you will see, yeah, by the name MS SQL. It has started running the SQL Server instance in Mac. That's pretty powerful, right? So you have the client utility, the Azure Data Studio to connect to the SQL Server, right? That would be our next step. Now let's go to Azure Data Studio. Okay. So step one, we're going to run from Azure Data Studio and then creating a connection to the SQL server that is running in my Docker image. The server would be localhost. Username is SA. Password, I can copy it from the previous one. Please feel free to provide any strong password of your choice. Connect. I'm connected to the local, you know, SQL server running in local host. Now I'll go to the next step and we'll create a sample database called tuning and then create two tables, driver locations and products, and insert few sample records in both of those tables. We'll copy the whole of it and run it from Azure Data Studio.
click the run button. You can see all the steps have been completed successfully. If you refresh the database now, you'll see tuning has come. I'm going to run a bunch of sample queries under the tuning database as the next thing. Now, as part of step two, if you have followed the steps for MySQL or Postgres, there were some steps uh, in order to initiate the detection of long running queries or history, any historically run queries. Now, in case of Microsoft SQL Server, we don't have any steps to follow here. We can directly run, you know, go to the step number three and run the sample queries. I have already kept two sample queries. Feel free to run any queries against those two databases, uh, against those two tables, my bad. Run them a couple of times, just to ensure it comes up in the order. Okay, and then this particular query I'll run explicitly a few more times. I think that's more than enough. Now we'll go to the next step, which is to figure out whether we have really detected the historically run queries or not, which is step number four here. And run it. There you go. If you scroll to a right, you'll see the query, name of the query that is being run. Sample query one, sample query one, sample query. This is basically sample query two, eight or star. So, and then let's look at the count, how many times they have been run so far, eight. And then this one is probably six or four, six, all right. Now we'll go back to the previous query window and I'll run this couple of more times just to see the result is going to change or not. I've run at least five more times. Now I'm going to run the query to see historically run queries. You can see this one has come up in the order. What is this query? Let's see. That's exactly the one which we just ran a few seconds back. So that's exactly how you detect any queries that you have run historically against the SQL Server database. Look at few other parameters columns here. Apart from the count, count will obviously give you Based on this count, you'll see you know, which queries have been run how many times historically. Now, this will give some foundation to our next step, which is detecting the queries which are uh, which are you know uh, which requires to be which required to be optimized, right? In certain way, either by adding few more indexes or having a right partitioning strategy, whatever could be the strategy. But this will give that foundation, right? Now, at the bottom of this query, you see a few more lines which are commented. The first option which we have run is going to show us frequently run query. That's exactly what we see. Now, if I just comment this and let's see, you know, what are a few queries which are reading a lot of data or writing a lot of data uh, from or to the disk? By disk, I mean uh, HDD or STD, right? Hard disk drive or uh, solid disk drive, uh, solid state drive. Okay, so here you can see, I may, you know, this might be not a user query, but a system query. Create table, some system query, right? But whatever it is, you know, this is going to give you that details about how much data this query has run, uh, read so far from the disk or write you know written so far into the disk and what is the average read or write that is happening per single query run likewise you can look at the other options where uh, it will show you the queries which are taking a lot of cpu time right total worker time average worker time and the last one is going to show you long running queries queries which are running for longer duration so that would be our elapsed time total elapsed time, average elapsed time, okay? So this single query will give you all those details. I think that was our last step. And this uh, 
B2 is going to give you the foundation as to how we detect this kind of queries. And then we'll go to our next step, go much deeper into you know, figuring out different indexing strategy, partitioning strategy in the next videos. Thanks for watching.